So, uh, like I said, after 20-30 seconds, maybe a minute, uh, the actual uh, virtual, machines, uh, virtual machine did restart. And, uh, of course, this can happen a few times uh, during the uh, initial startup. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to wait for the virtual machine to completely prepare by, uh, and uh, we can uh, go to the next, next task. And... Yeah, there we go. You can see that uh, this is the after the actual sysprep runs. Uh, this is the window that you will see according to uh, and of course uh, the operating system that you are going to prepare. This window will be different, but uh, this is the Windows 7 uh, preparation process. So while the virtual machine is preparing, uh, we are going to switch to the um, next task, which is uh, creating a content library. And the content library in vSphere web client, uh, you can use it to populate uh, templates and deploy virtual machines or vApps uh, in your virtual environment. So it's a good thing to have and you can uh, go in there by clicking to the uh, small home button and then go to content libraries. And this is a brief information of what you can store in the content library. So if you click on objects, you can create a new content library from the bottom above. And we'll name that, for example, um, VM, VM library. So uh, yeah, the vCenter server, click next. So now you have two options to select from. One is the local content library and the other one is the subscribed content library. So the difference between the two is the local content library is available and accessible only for the vCenter server instance where you create it. And if you want to make the contents of this library available for other users as well, you need to publish. Uh, externally. So you can of course uh, use authentication so they will use an account and a password to uh, to log in. Uh, on the other hand you have the subscribed content library. It, what you can do is if you select this option you can connect to a published library and you can synchronize all the images from this library. Uh, with the subscribed content library you cannot delete or edit any of the templates or anything else uh, instead only the administrators of the published uh, library uh, that you're singing from can edit and uh, configure the things so i'm going to select the local content library and i'm going to publish externally of course you can see that we have the option to optimize it to sync over http but um, yeah, I'm just uh, going to leave uh, the defaults and I'm not going to select enable authentication. Just click next. And on the next uh, window, you'll see that it will ask us to add the storage location of the library contents. So you have the option to select an SMB or NFS server uh, path. And in here you have the NFS4, NFS3 or SMB. Or you can select the one of the data stores to co to uh, contain all the images. So I'm just going to use uh, one of my data stores right now, and uh, yeah, we can use that for a content library. So when I click finish, it should uh, create my content library, and we should be good to go to start populating it with. Uh, different different uh, templates so I had to click refresh right on the top and you can see that uh, I have now my VM library listed in here so while we do this I'm going to switch real fast to my um, virtual machine that we've cloned from a template and if I go to the properties let me see what's the result yep the uh, PC name has changed to NLB PC02 and uh, yeah everything seems to be working just fine. Okay 
So I already have uh, VMware tools pre-installed, so uh, everything is working. You can see the mouse is working as well. So I'm going to close this uh, window. And what we are going to do next is we are going to clone our VM template uh, to a template in our VM library. So we can achieve this by going into VMs and templates and select the template that we have pre-created and we can, what we can do is right click and select the option to clone to library so you can write here that uh, right on the top you have the option to clone as a new template or update the existing template we are going to select a new template uh, on the um, middle of the window you have the option to select the uh, template library and so we can um, change the name of the template so we let's say we change it to template so we, we can um, mention that it's uh, added into the actual library. You can preserve the MAC address on the network adapters or include extra configuration, but I don't need that right now. So I can click OK. And the actual copy of the template should start in a second. You can see that uh, it's exporting an OVF template and it's going to... Um, upload the files uh, when the actual OVF uh, has been exported successfully. So if I switch to my content libraries, slowly but surely um, you'll see that I have one template and uh, it's going to start increasing the storage used by the uh, template. So yeah, it's transferring files, it's doing its stuff. Yeah, it's taking its time. So there it is, uh, The it's starting to copy the template. So I'm going to leave that uh, the way it is for now. So uh, we can continue with the uh, next uh, the next steps. So I've waited a few more moments, grabbed a cup of coffee and uh, I can see that uh, the transfer has completed successfully. And I now have my um, template within the content library, which I can use to deploy virtual machines from it. And so this is the next step uh, that we are going to do. I'm not going to finish it uh, because uh, the process is going to take time and I actually do not need uh, any um, new virtual machines to be copied from the content library. So we can, I will just show you how this, this process is done basically. So it's pretty straightforward. You need to open the VM library, go to the templates and right click on the actual template that you have and click on new VM from this template. Another wizard should appear and this wizard will be pretty much the um, same uh, as the, the previous one. So we can name the uh, virtual machine. Uh, let me copy that. NLB PC03. We can place the uh, uh, virtual machine in a uh, the data center uh, container, and we can customize the operating system. So we can see that we have the option to select the Windows 7 preparation file as well. We can select the resources in here or basically select one of the ESXi hosts to deploy the virtual machine to. I'm going to select the second one. On the next window we'll see that we have uh, reviewed the details and uh, yeah this is going to basically provision the actual um, 
template to my host and on the next window we can select the storage select one of the storages to deploy of course in my case i'm just going to select team provisioning for now and click next select the vm network or any other networks that you have and click next and if I uh, click on finish from here, basically I will deploy a new virtual machine from my content library, which I'm not going to do right now. So we can click cancel to this wizard and uh, move to the next task, which is the last one, finally. And this is cloning a live virtual machine. So in general, you can clone virtual machines, so you can create new virtual machines with the same uh, hardware, virtual hardware, installed software, configuration and other properties as well. And why would you do this? Um, I can give you a real life example uh, in order for us to test um, if a patch or if uh, a configuration change will not break the whole environment, what we do is we clone uh, virtual machines, of course, uh, isolate them, and this is really important, isolate them from uh, the uh, actual environment by connecting them into a different uh, network. Um, and uh, what we do next is we test, we confirm that the deployment is successful and then we um, configure the actual settings in production. So what you can do is instead of shutting down the servers which will prevent them from uh, working, uh, what you can do is you can clone a virtual machine uh, while it is running to another location. And I'm going to clone this PC that we've just deployed. Okay, so let's say hot clone. So I can delete it later, place it into the proper container and place it on my second TSXI host. Select the storage. And this is not going to make any impact uh, on the virtual machine while it is running. So uh, uh, you can use it uh, safely without any problems. So I'm going to select one of the data stores, let's say the NFS data store, select the team provisioning so we can be sure that uh, we don't uh, interfere. And this is the part where we actually can customize the image so we can sysprep it or the way that I've said, I've um, no, I'm not going to select to customize it because I want this machine to be a test machine that I'm going to isolate from my network, uh, so we can perform tests on it. So if I click finish, the clone virtual machine should start, and uh, it's going to take some time to clone everything. But if I go to the actual virtual machine the live one and try to open the remote console the virtual machine should be up and running uh, without any problems so it's taking its time my environment is uh, pretty loaded at the moment and it's taking its time, but that's normal. So unfortunately, um, the space on my NFS share was not sufficient, but nevertheless, I've uh, restarted uh, the clone process on my data store where I freed some additional space. Let's see if this will uh, help to, and if this is going to be successful as well. So if I go into here, yeah, that's that looks pretty normal. Um, let me try to, while the virtual machine is cloning, I'm just going to launch the remote console once again. And just verify that uh, the virtual machine is up and running during the cloning process. 
Well, unfortunately, while I was opening the remote console, um, the virtual machine finished uh, cloning, and uh, yeah, you can see right here that uh, the the original virtual machine that I've cloned from is live and currently running, and I have a hot clone that uh, I can modify and configure and power on if needed, and just uh, remember not to. Um, connect the cloned the hot cloned virtual machine to a uh, the same network as the uh, original one because it will make some problems so um yeah this was the last task from the lab i know that the video was e the video is a bit long but uh, yeah this uh, had to be shown and um so we can cover everything in the lab itself. If you have any questions, you can always put them in the comment section below. Uh, if you like the video, you can always hit the like button and subscribe to NLB Solutions. And don't forget to hit the small bell icon so you can receive notifications when I upload a new video. Every um, time that you watch a video is a huge help for me. So thank you very much for doing that. Share the video, subscribe to NLB and um, hopefully we can grow to be a big channel on YouTube um, one day. Once again, this was Nick from NLB Solutions. Thank you very much for viewing and see you in the next lab.